All right. Appreciate the uh, intro. Uh, more importantly, appreciate everybody jumping on, um, especially a Monday night. I know that uh, coming back into the work week, if, if people are working, I don't know this week, we are <laughs> trying to get a couple of days in before Thanksgiving. Um, but I appreciate you spending some time with me. I think this is a, a fun subject. Um, we'll try to dive into it, have a little bit of fun. Um, like what was mentioned, if there are questions, absolutely feel free to do so. Um, I am going to give my information at the very end as well. Um, I, I do pretty good about getting back with email, um, typically within like 24 hours. If you have any questions, um, clinical questions, practice management questions, whatever the case may be, I would love to answer those and get to know you a little bit more off, on the off, off time of being on this uh, webinar. So um, with that being said, um, I am from Las Vegas, as you saw before. There's a nice picture of a beautiful sunset here in the desert. Um, we have beautiful weather right now. You know, we're, we're uh, just hitting into the winter season, which we may get down into the 60s or, or even high 50s. Um, this is my practice. I started this practice from scratch out of residency um, about 13, 14 years ago. And um, with that, there's been a lot of evolution in terms of how I practice, um, how I manage my practice, how I manage my patients. Um, but more importantly, utilizing technology to my advantage, um, doing things a little bit quicker, a little bit better. Um, we're going to talk about true success in implant dentistry, more dealing with full arch versus um, single unit um, prosthetics and things like that. But um, I think you'll gain a lot of this, um, a little bit of knowledge, you know, hopefully you can take through the next day. Um, with that, you know, as we start out and we talk about some different things, you know, growing up in Las Vegas, um, we went to the, the strip often, you know, growing up here, we saw a lot of stuff, <laughs> entertained um, all the time. Um, but as we go down the strip, you know, of the Las Vegas strip here, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, a lot of new hotels, you know, pop up. Um, but what makes one hotel better than the other? As I'm walking down, is like, what's going to make it more appealing for me to maybe go into the Aria and, and experience that, that, uh, that resort or that hotel, or maybe going across the street to the Planet Hollywood or the Paris? Um, so a lot of, you know, things in terms of marketing and, and how we appeal to people um, is what these casinos do on a daily basis. You know, as they as they go through, it might be Bobby Flay's new restaurant that Caesars Palace, you know, um, and gets going. And um, as a foodie, you know, I love going to the strip and, and partaking in all these new restaurants. And so that's going to make it maybe more appealing to go into the MGM that I haven't been in in 10 years, but they might have a new restaurant or something that's going to make them a little bit more um, flavorful or, or appealing. Um, or it might be a new club or, or you know, uh, some type of an attraction. And, and with, you know, with our sports teams that we have now and things too, you know, some of those hotels are maybe a little bit more, you know, advantageous of marketing to those, those uh, events. And so um, with UFC and all these other events here, there's a lot of things that appeal to us. But one of the things I want to kind of segue into in terms of our practices or, or how you practice uh, as a physician is that what are you going to do to make yourself different? Um, you know, I, I try to think about any time a conference or a, or a lecture I go to is like, what is it going to do to really make me better? Um, and really, who's the one that is going to take advantage of this? Is it's going to be our patients is that the more and more we, you know, um, educate ourselves and, you know, come accustomed to maybe some of this newer technology or these new methods, um, but it's going to make yourself different. And so it's going to make you stand out somebody that's maybe across the street from you that's practicing dentistry as well. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, geographical, you know, advantages and things like that, too, as, as we go through this. But um, think about that as you go through this and especially as you go through any other any other type of education is that what is it going to do to make you stand out? And so or what are you going to do to employ, you know, these type of methods or this type of thinking into your practice? And so if you if you come out with anything, think about this slide, think about, you know, the kind of the hustle bustle of Las Vegas of what's going to make yourself different than the next. Um, with that, you know, I've utilized guided surgery probably throughout the, the, the majority of my career. Um, we do it for dental implants, of course, and now we're doing it for soft tissue aesthetics, you know, for crown lengthening and guided, you know, guided smile design and gingival emergence, you know, you know, coming up with custom healing abutments or custom prosthesis um, to, on single anterior implants. And uh, we're also utilizing it for orthognathic reconstruction. Obviously, I don't do that as a periodontist. Um, but for full art surgery and prosthetics, this is one of the things that I've really grasped and, and, and brought into my practice to um, take my practice to the kind of the next level within the community that I'm in in Las Vegas um, with my referral base and nationally, you know, in terms of the referrals that I get now um, is utilizing this type of technology. And so it's there. 
Um, it's available. It's it's easy to use, um, and we're going to get into it. You're going to see it, you know, kind of comprehensively here. But this is the world that we live in. You know, if you look at the treatment planning that goes on nowadays, it's not you know um, looking at something and then trying to come up with something freehand. We're doing these. It's like a facially driven treatment plan that's being taught by a number of people. Um, Christian Coachman with Digital Smile Design and John Coyce up in Seattle and Frank Spears down in um, Scottsdale, Arizona is that this is the world that we live in, is that we are taking high-end photos and digital scans and CBCT analysis, and now we can digitally derive where basically the end's going to be before we even start. And so, you know, with utilizing this type of technology, we do it for a traditional crown and bridge, we do it for veneers and aesthetics, we do it for gingival contouring, but more importantly, we're doing it for full arch too. And so, um, you know, if you're not you know, adapt to this or you're not familiar with this, then you're, you're really falling way behind. And so there have been, there's a number of courses out there. All of these individuals teach it extensively, um, but it's a beautiful thing. And it's one of those things that makes not only myself successful of, of being, I'm an average guy. And so I want to try to bring something into my practice that's going to make me better, um, you know, with utilizing this technology. And a lot of us all have intraoral scanners. Um, we all have CT scans and, and, you know, if we get some of our maybe our photography up to up to uh, a level that is going to be uh, advantage for our labs and whatnot, we can utilize this to to uh, a very successful level. All next is out there. You know, if, if you look at, um, you know, in the media and if you look at what's being advertised, um, clear choice. We have a clear choice right here in Las Vegas. I love them. You know, they're great. They they advertise like crazy. We have a number of patients that come in for second opinions. Um, Dr. Golpa, the G4 implant solution, he's 10 miles up the road for me. Um, these are all, you know, individuals that do 30, 40, 50 arches a month. And it's not a practice that I have that I want to do that. But one of the things that I love is that they do advertise a lot, but it's out there because typically these type of treatment plans are very simple. Um, it's wiping everything from scratch, you know, orthognathically and dentally and, and aesthetically and functionally, we can start from scratch. And so, um, it doesn't take a lot of thinking. So you see a lot of individuals that are doing these that probably shouldn't, um, you know, turning these into kind of a mill um, of, you know, patients coming in and out and they never get followed up with. Um, that's not how we want to practice. We want to make sure that we are, you know, very exclusive in terms of where we take these treatment plans. So when I throw these out here, it's not something that um, we do on every single patient. I turn more patients away from an all on X solution than I do them. And so um, we do see a lot of consultations for these, um, and and there are candidates for it. And so there's a reason why we do it, and it's for you know circumstances like this where we have a patient that comes in. Obviously, he's had a lot of neglect um, with his uh, dentition and his and his oral health. Um, but this is a guy that you know he has two sons that he's put through college. They both went to Stanford. He is a uh, mechanic down at one of the casinos, and um, finally his wife said, "All right, it's your turn to." to fix what we've got going on here. And so um, as he was retiring and his and his sons have been super successful in their careers, he came in and talked to me and I said, you're absolutely a candidate for an all on X because we have a, a situation that starts like this. And so, you know, this is a daunting task for a patient maybe that comes in and goes, I probably have no options, but maybe a denture. Well, obviously that's not the case. And and as we put him through treatment, you know, we, we go from start to, to finish and you can imagine his wife as she picked him up, um, you know, as she, as he went in with with the the look and the health that he had before, and he wakes up something like this in a matter of two or three hours, um, that is a very emotional journey that you have the opportunity to be a part of. And so that's one of the the amazing things about what we do, and and especially as as dentists, is that what a smile can do for somebody. And so for this patient comes in, you know, and like I said, in a matter of a couple hours. Um, has an amazing transformation. This is our our guy waking up. Um, he doesn't really know where he is right now. He's just coming out of uh, a sedation. Um, but this is what his wife walked into. You know, he's got a smile on his face and literally his occlusion is perfect and it's great. But we're able to do these arches now where it's about an hour to an hour and a, and a half per arch um, when we do these. And so this is a double arch case where we got him in and out in like two and a half to three hours. And because of we're utilizing no labs. We're doing everything completely guided along with not only the, the surgery, but also the prosthesis. And you're going to really have a great understanding of that tonight. And so we then give him finals. These are zirconia finals. 
Um, you know, the zirconia finals are great. Um, they're, they're long lasting. The aesthetics are, are fantastic. And there's his uh, after. And you can see where he started to where he is today. Um, but like I said, these are amazing journeys that we have with our, our patients that um, I see these patients at least two, um, at least yearly, if not, if not more. And it's not because they probably need the hygiene. It's more is that I want to follow up with them. And, and like I said, we've been through so much together. We have an amazing privilege to, to do these. And so um, great case, you know, or even a case like Heather's here is that um, you can tell that she's had a lot of abuse in her life, um, self-induced. And so she's overcome a tremendous amount of a hardship and addiction, and she's finally rewarding herself. And this is actually a patient where we utilized her for um, our institute. Um, here in Las Vegas, where we teach this course, where we do a live surgery. And so we have an opportunity to give back two or three times a year. And Heather was one of them. You know, she's a nurse here in town. And again, you know, we have non-restorable dentition, needs root canals on almost every single tooth. And we end up with a situation like this. I mean, complete transformation. And so, you know, from where she starts to where she is now, um, I mean, amazing life ch life changing um, you know, procedure and literally in a couple hours. And so um, Heather, you know, goes from, from where she started to where she is today, but look at the countenance that she has and just how much bright and cheerful and, and amazing, uh, you know, her life has just turned around and, and we reward her with a nice smile. And so it was an amazing case to where these are the ones that we love, you know, these are the ones that uh, we absolutely um, could, I wish I could do them for free. Great. Or we have a patient like Sam, and these are the ones that we see in our communities that are an absolute tragedy. Um, this is Sam. Sam's actually a neighbor of mine. His wife is a uh, physician. I see her out walking the dog all the time. He's a professional poker player here in town. And he spent over $140,000 for a case that looks like this. And so this is these are finals. You know, he came in for a consultation. He thought he things are breaking. He's in pain. And, um, you know, and with something like this, we have complete malpractice. And so we do see a lot of that. And where do we pick up the pieces? You know, especially when you look at the x-ray here, we literally have an implant for almost every single tube. And so not treatment planned well, not executed, and then probably, you know, misinform the patient in terms of what they were getting long term to where we have got to diagnose these better. We've got to do these um, in a manner to where it's going to be pleasing for everybody. But the patient comes first, and this is one that was an absolute, you know, terrible situation. And so now we're re-treatment planning this to where we're utilizing some of these implants as temporaries, bone grafting. It's a major ordeal um, to get him back to where he needs to be. And so now he's doing this twice. And so we don't want to do that. And so with, with cases like that, we also have circumstances like this is where if we're doing full arch and we're starting from scratch, well, there are risks involved with this as well. And with a patient that we uh, we have here, who's, who's an amazing, beautiful guy, uh, just a sweetheart of a dude, you know, an ex-military veteran and um, comes in, we do an all on X. This was done by me. This is my case. And um, you can see where it's all got, I mean, it's like almost completely planned perfectly. And he had some restorations that need to be done on his uh, first molars, which uh, for first and second molar on this lower left side, 18 and 19. And the referring doctor used a triple tray to take an impression and it got locked into his prosthesis, which is this is a temporary and literally was trying his hardest to try to get this thing off and actually pulled the implants out. And so he comes in, you know, after a couple of weeks of this, this happening and he said, hey, I, things are loose. You know, I think we just need to tighten this down. But let me come in. And I said, absolutely. Come and take a look. And, and literally the whole thing is moving around so we can have failures. You know, we can have self-induced failures, we can have surgical failures, we can have prosthesis failures, um, and we can just have, you know, bad circumstances like this to where literally the whole thing came out. And the only benefit was this is we got a great picture out of it, but we had to start from scratch with with this individual and bone graft, and he was in a denture for like nine months and just a, a lot of stuff went on with this. And so unfortunately, you know, things can happen. And so we got to make sure that, like I said, do these in a manner to where that's going to be um, easy for us, but also successful long-term. And so let's talk about success a little bit. You know, if I come into my practice every single day, there's one of those things where, you know, I look at my I look at my schedule and I go, OK, what's going to make me successful with maybe this procedure or this patient that maybe is a little bit more trouble um, or maybe a team member? You know, I have a team member that maybe I want to connect a little bit with and try to make you know that day successful for, for them. 
um, or maybe a referral or, or maybe my lab. Um, so I look at that and I try to come up with like, you know, one or two things that are going to make me successful in that given day and try maybe a little bit extra harder for that. And so if you look at the definition of success, it's some type of an accomplishment of an aim or a purpose, but really what is success in implant dentistry? And so this is a, a tougher, tougher thing to achieve. And so the late Carl Misch, I was at a conference, um, this was down in San Diego and it was, you know, I was in residency and I didn't pay a lot of attention. I was mainly out you know, in the lamplight district and having fun and, and doing, do, staying out way too late and, and hanging out with colleagues. But I did attend his lecture. And one of the things that he mentioned is that if we can reproduce and restore aesthetics, function, contour, comfort, speech, and health, if we can nail all of those, then we are going to be completely successful in implant dentistry, whether it be a single premolar, whether it be an immediate, you know, anterior implant, or whether it be full large, but really, how difficult is it to achieve all of these? I think that's very, very difficult, especially if we're going in there just analog and putting implants in bone to where we think that maybe things are going to be in the right place. That's not the way we do things now. Like I said, it's a facially driven, functional, aesthetic plan first, and then we can retrofit our, our surgery on top of that. But we need to do that digitally. And so um, by doing that, that's what we want to talk about today. You know, with immediate full arch restorations, these are completely successful. It's not something that's new. Um, this is the great Paulo Malo. He's kind of the grandfather um, with all of this. And, um, you know, out of uh, Portugal, lots of lots of research um, and, you know, a lot of, uh, of, of basically, you know, um, research that's going to, to prove that we can do this. And so, you know, whether it be four implants or six implants, what exactly is an all on X? Um, this is a great mentor of mine. This is uh, Michael Picos, an oral surgeon down in Florida. And he says this paradigm shift is a treatment and a treatment is a concept, not a list of principles. And it requires commitment to true surgical and prosthetic skills. And I think that, that he said that very, very well is that we have surgery and we have prosthetics and we've got to mingle these together. And the, the one of the things that was tough is that you know, even as early as like 10, 15 years ago is to have software that would prosthetically derive a surgical plan or a surgical plan that would derive a prosthesis plan didn't co coexist. And now it does. And so, you know, with these principles, I, I think that we can we can be pretty keen on this. And we know that we have, you know, immediately loaded, immediately function, immediately provisionalized all on four or all on six is typically what we like to go for. And they're all connected. And it's something that can be completely successful. So immediately full arch restorations, we can do these in a number of ways, right? Um, we can do these freehand. We can talk about analog, you know, basically taking teeth out, just putting them in, hoping I'm having a good day that day. Um, we can have guided surgery, um, guided just bone reduction um, guides. We can have pilot drills of just kind of putting things kind of in the right direction. Or now we have the ability to go fully guided surgery with a fully guided prosthesis. And so with that being said, you know, of course, we're going to get into that. But this is what we used to do. You know, this is what I used to do, you know, 15, 20 years ago, um, is that where we'd have a traditional analog workflow that where we would utilize the patient's immediate denture or their full denture to kind of drive where we were headed with these. Now, we're not going to get into this. You know, we, well, you can talk about analog treatment um, on a different day. Um, but I, the one thing I really want you to note um, when we do talk about analog treatment or doing it this way is that if you don't have a knowledge of this first, diving in directly to a digital workflow with a fully guided situation um, is not a good idea. And I think, it, and the reason being is that as many and as hundreds and hundreds of these as I've done, is that there are those circumstances where you have to maybe abort the, 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 the surgical guide or the prosthesis, and you have to have a knowledge of taking a backup denture or freehand surgery in order to kind of get out of that situation. This has happened to me. And so these are not fail proof. And that's one of the things that we, I definitely want to, you know, make sure that you realize is that, yeah, you can't just have a company, you know, drive a treatment plan for you. You get the guides, you, you go ahead and just do it. And it's just going to work out every time. You got to have true surgical skills. And I think if you don't start with an analog knowledge base first, it's going to be a, a tough situation one day. And so try to come up with, you know, there's a bunch of courses out there. If you go to Teeth Express courses, there are a number of analog courses um, Dr. Sharafi, um, good good friend of mine, Dr. Uh, Ferrier too. Um, they they teach an amazing analog course with true conversion. Take that first, and then jump into maybe a course that we teach. 
um, traditional workflow, but these are the ones things, these are the things that made me, you know, super frustrated with analog treatment is that you had so many appointments, you know, you had an immediate denture that was made and you had, who's going to be doing the conversion? Is it me or is it my referral base? Is it a lab technician that's going to come in? I went through probably a dozen labs here in Las Vegas or even outside, you know, the surrounding states where they would come in and they would go, all right, I'm going to be there. I do the surgery in an hour and then the conversion would take three and the patient would be sitting there and the morbidity goes way up because things are open or, or, you know, they're not, they're not at home relaxing. Nowadays we can do t we do these in like two or three appointments and they're completely successful and they're so dialed in that we can now do these surgeries in like an hour, an hour and a half. So um, you'll see that, you know, here in real time. And so one of the things that I love, you know, I, I love to read. Um, this is, you know, if anybody knows who this author is, this is Stephen R. Covey. Um, Stephen R. Covey is, you know, is kind of a guru in terms of self-help and, and things. I read these when I was back in college and it was the seven, high, seven habits of highly effective people. And he talks a lot about reactive versus proactive thinking. You know, if you look at a reactive mindset or a reactive situation every single day, you know, you can, it doesn't matter if you're walking across the street or if you're walking into your office or treating somebody or treating a patient, you are approached with some type of a circumstance where you need to make a decision. And so you have to think on, on your feet a little bit in a reactive mindset, that circumstance is presented before you and then you react to it and you hope you come out with some type of response that's going to be favorable. And so circumstances and conditions control these, these, uh, these situations with a reactive mindset. Um, I love motorcycles. I grew up, you know, riding motorcycles and I, I ride still um, not out in the dirt, but mainly on the street. But if you look at this type of uh, circumstance or this situation, this is a very reactive procedure or, or endeavor, right? There's people that can jump out in front of me or, or in my case, you know, there's, I almost got hit by a golf ball the other day. It was like the weirdest thing. It was like all of a sudden I'm like dodging a golf ball in the middle of the street um you know or uh, somebody's walking their dog and then suddenly the dog jumps in front of you or whatever the case may be that's a very reactive mindset and so one of the things that if i had the ability to maybe look into the future and say okay at this given moment i need to make a left turn so i don't run into the back of this truck or get around this guy because he's acting crazy if i had that opportunity that would be an amazing situation wouldn't it and so with that that is a very proactive mindset and so a proactive mindset, we have the ability to do that in our practices now, which is which is amazing. And so we are still presented with the same type of stimulus. We're still presented with the same type of circumstances. But because we now have the freedom to choose on how those how we're going to react to that, we can take the initiative to make things a lot better. OK, does that make sense? And so with that, we have this response now that is superseded in terms of where that outcome can be to be at that most optimal level. And so with that, you know, I, I go into surgery and I have now things that I can now pre-plan and I know exactly where I'm going with things. Um, with the CT or the CBCT um, situations with all the, the, the high quality imaging and things like that that we have, I know where nerves are and, and sinuses are. And I know where, you know, tertiary um, canals are and all these other things that can be a, a problem in surgery. And we can take advantage of that. And so this is a very proactive mindset. And this is where we're kind of pushing things now with innovative guided surgery and prosthesis. This is very proactive. And so with fully guided fixed hybrid digital workflow, we have to choose and act in advance of, of a lot of future circumstances. We can make sure that patients are candidates for things way ahead of time before we even get into a circumstance where now they're under the knife and we have to maybe, you know, put a patient in a full denture or, or they go home with nothing. And so we have complete control in all these in all these situations. And so when we do these, like I said, these are not only very, very uh, successful, but the only person that benefits this really the most is our patients. And so, um, you know, talking about that, we can look at any type of, of uh, you know, research and things like that about the accuracy of implant placement, even with experienced surgeons, guided versus freehand. We are way more proactive and we have a way lower risk of, of traumatic events when we use guided surgery. And so um, with that, take that home. Um, but more so, what did I say at the very beginning? I said, what's really going to make ourselves different? And so not only is it going to be different maybe in the hands for your patients, but also who's going to make what's going to make you different as a surgeon or as, as a doctor? And so this is Las Vegas. And if you look at this, you know, to to your uh, to your right is the Las Vegas Strip. 
And so this is all on the west side of town. This is Summerlin. Um, Summerlin is kind of the west end of town. And so everybody in green, as I map this out, is a general dentist. Okay. And so very, very saturated. Everybody in orange or red here, I think there's a couple of red dots here, is either an oral surgeon, a periodontist, or a what I call a super GP. Um, somebody that does a lot of surgery, somebody that's doing all on X, or somebody's doing a lot of dental implants. And so um, with this, there is a tremendous amount of competition in my neck of the woods. Literally, I can across the street, I have, you know, three, you know, doctors that are amazing doctors that are amazing surgeons. I don't see a referral unless it's like their mother or or like their wife will they'll send over. Um, but if it's, you know, somebody that is apt to doing things really, really well, but I have that as a competition. But utilizing this type of treatment and utilizing guided surgery, especially in full arch, is really set myself, you know, away from the competition because now the word of mouth is, oh, I had this procedure done by Dr. Levin. This is the way he did it. And I show my patients, like, these are the guys that we're going to be used. This is going to be different than what you're going to get down the street. And so use this to your advantage to maybe set yourself apart from somebody else. Because it's really, you know, maybe something small that is going to catapult your practice into maybe somewhere where you want to be. And it may not just be treatment or of a, like all on X treatment with guided surgery. It may be the way that you are treating your staff or whatever the case may be um or your team and so this is you know swimming if you look at michael phelps the one of the greatest olympic athletes that we've had in our day and so what made him amazing though was that if you saw that the margin of of error the margin of success that he had with with those gold medals and and the way he he does how much did he win by he won by 0.2 seconds or 0.4 seconds he literally beat people by, you know, a finger length, you know, as, as they came across the, into, into the wall. And so that that to me was pretty amazing that he did that successfully pretty, pretty consistently. I mean, he has more gold medals than anybody that we've we've had in our in our time. And so but what made him just that much better? Was it the way that he trained? Was it the way that his mindset was? Was it the way his, his work ethic was? Um, was he coachable? I mean, it's like all these things, and we're going to talk about that a little bit at the end. Um, but, you know, think about that when you go into practice is that what's going to make yourself just a little bit better and for you, not only to, you know, be happy with where you're at in, in your career, but for your patients. And like I said, even monetarily, what's going to make yourself a little bit better too. Okay. So set yourself apart from the competition. All right. So fully guided fixed hybrid workflow. This, this is basically... Um, how things come about within my practice. And this is kind of the workflow here, okay? It always starts with a consultation. Um, within that consultation, it's a, what we call a triage visit. And so that triage visit is basically the patient goes, uh, goes through their health history. Um, we take a CBCT and then uh, we will sit down with the patient for about 10, 15 minutes and make sure that they're actually a candidate for full arch, okay? So these are full arch consultations. And like I said, there's a lot of these to where it's second opinions and it's appalling to me that they were even given the treatment plan to take all their teeth out. And so we'll talk about options if we need to reappoint them to talk about maybe these more more uh, involved cases where it's, you know, uh, multidisciplinary treatment planning to where I get, you know, my prosthodontist and orthodontist and, and endodontist involved. Then those are a little bit different. But these are true triage visits to where we can kind of the, the cut and dry of where these are going to go. Typically, we do these during like maybe a 15, 20 minute, maybe lunch hour. If they don't show up, then maybe I might eat lunch that day. That's fantastic. We don't take a lunch in my practice. Um, we also you know, maybe see these at the end of the day to where it's not going to take away from a lot of my time where, you know, the nuts and bolts of my practice where I want to be productive with my whole team there. We, we, we try to schedule these in, in kind of odd hours and then uh, make sure that they're candidates. OK. After we do that consultation and they are a true candidate for this and, and they buy in, we bring them back for a data collection visit. So data collection visit, we take a number of photos. Um, photography, like I said, is very important to me. It's something that I, I've taken outside the office and become you know, a little bit more of a fan of buying way too much equipment than probably I, I should admit to. Um, but with that, like I said, we take a lot of high-end photos and these are all, all on X cases. Um, so we take a lot of portrait photos. We do a lot of before and afters. We send those home with the patients. Patients love them. And, um, you know, we, we try to implement that in our, in our in my practice. And so if you look at every operatory, too, in, in which I have, we have 75-inch TVs in every single operatory. 
where I can now take high-end photos and guess who's diagnosing their own treatment? The patient. The patient looks at their smile and they see retracted views of two millimeters of recession. And they're like, holy shit, I got to take care of this like tomorrow. You know, I, I can't believe I, I look like that. And so anyway, utilize this type of technology and utilize it so easy now to take a bunch of photos, upload them to a computer. Everything's airdropped or, or airplayed. Um, I'm a big Mac guy where we have Macs in every single operatory, but if you have questions on this, absolutely, please let me know. You know, these are some of the setups that I have. Um, we take a lot of high-end photos, even in surgery. So these are soft boxes above the patient. Um, but something like this to the right, you know, where you can go to Amazon and literally under $1,000, you can get soft boxes and a backdrop um, and, you know, work with this type of a setup really easy. Um, and now they even have um, you know, setups where the patients can hold different lights, where it's very portable. You don't have to have something where you have to have space. And so definitely email me at, as, as you get to this. And um, we'll talk about it. You know, you, we'll talk about some of the products and things like that that make things easy. But this is kind of how we use things, even in surgery. Do, but these are some examples of photography. Again, it's not utilizing an iPhone, is it? So these are all, like I said, high-end, high-quality lighting. Use that to your advantage to not only discuss things with your lab, but then like a, a, for marketing value and things like that for your patients. Okay. Everybody's got an intraoral scanner nowadays, whether it be Seric or um, some of the other ones, Medit and Trios. Um, this is a Trio scanner. We have a number of them in our in, in the office. Um, there is one assistant that is actually responsible for all intraoral scans. And so that's what she does. She actually has a column on my, in my, on my schedule. And so she will go through and she's kind of our digital um, techie that will go through. And these are very, very fast, very, very accurate. So not only are we taking photos, we've already had a CVCT taken at their triage visit. And now we'll take an intraoral scan as well. And we're going to send all this information off to the lab. There's a number of labs that you can use. Uh, we're going to talk about a new um, partnership in which I've, I've been involved with um, here in a little bit. But what's nice about this and what I've alluded to even before is that now we have prosthetic software that can now work with surgical software and we can mix the two. OK, so we can drive aesthetics and occlusion and function, which is the most important. And now we can now retrofit our surgical treatment plan that drives the precision, you know, prevents a lot of this invasiveness and biotype control. And then we can kind of, you know, mix the two together and, and drive really true implant success. And so when you send things off to the lab, they'll actually digitalize your scans and you come up with an articulated model that's digital. And so with that, you know, we can go through surgically and, and kind of come up with some type of a treatment plan here. We're going to talk about, you know, some of these, the, the visit that you'll have with the lab. So no matter what, you're going to send those, that information off, you're going to take a CVCT. You're going to take an intraoral scan and you're going to take photos. You're going to send that off to, which we utilize as Vulcan. Vulcan is our milling center, which is owned by BioHorizons. And we're going to talk about that here in the future um, in just a minute. But you send those three items over to, to Vulcan and then you'll have like what we like a go-to meeting or a Zoom meeting in which they will basically put together a treatment plan for you. But you got to have a lot of knowledge in terms of where you want to take your case because there's not one case where I go through and I make changes. And so whether it be the implant diameter or the length or where the implants placed or, you know, how things are spaced or where the bone quality is and where am I moving things around, but I'm following the, the prosthesis of where I want to take things in the end. And I'm always making changes with my implants or my surgical protocol. And so with that, there is a patient workup that you have to have a great knowledge of, whether it be lip support and transition line and restorative space implant number position. We talk all about these, you know, over a two day course. And so we're not going to talk about them tonight. Um, that if you have, want more knowledge in this and really understanding true treatment planning with all on X courses, there's so many courses out there, whether it be Michael Picos or, or any of the teeth express courses, if you can go to teethexpresscourses.com, there's a number of courses you can choose from, from all over the country. We're one of them as well from the digital side. And so come to Las Vegas, Las Vegas, we have one in March. Um, it's a beautiful time to be here, but this is the, this is an example of a go-to meeting. Okay. 
And so they go through and look at what's being happened first is that the prosthesis is being thrown up here first. All right. Are we happy with the aesthetics? Are we happy with the occlusion? Are we happy with, you know, the tooth shape and the tooth number and wherever we're taking things? Now we can go through and go, okay, in order to achieve this, we got to have this much bone reduction, literally to the 0.2 millimeter of, of reduction. And this is where we need to put the implants where now we're going to have a thinner prosthesis. We're going to have something that's going to feel natural. It's not going to have a big palate, you know, piece to it. It's coming out the cingulum or, or the, uh, the long axis of the, the working loads of the teeth. So this is true success in terms of putting implants now in a prosthetic and a prosthetic platform to where it's like natural teeth. Okay, so look at the, the the precision that now we can drive this. But I'm going through and I'm making a ton of changes with with the lab um, by doing this. And so we go through. We start with the prosthesis first. We then get a surgical treatment plan, and we end up with basically a recipe. Okay, this is an example of what we utilize now. Okay. So we do all of our planning with 3D Diagnostics. 3Ddiagnostics.com is where um, basically all your all the planning will come from. But all the information that you send is to Vulcan. So Vulcan, like I said, is our milling center. Um, they're they're owned and operated by Bob Horizons. And this is the type of uh, uh, situation that we're dealing with now, is where it's guides that are a bone reduction guide or a bone foundation guide, and then everything is held in by magnets now. And so you're going to see an example of one that wasn't and then one that is and really the precision of where we've derived things over the last couple of years. And so, like, again, all these things kind of snap together. It's like a Lego. Once you have your bone foundation guide, which is this bottom piece here, uh, the other you know parts and pieces of the guide will basically just snap in on the magnets. And it kind of fits in there. It fits in there very intimately. It doesn't move around. But these are very, very high quality, almost like. NASA drive magnets here that it's really tough to get in and out, but it's it's beautiful because we don't have pins now holding these things together and it just kind of pops in and out, which is great. And so this is our implant guide. This is where it's going to place our implants. Our implants are now placed perfectly. You can see our bone reduction is going to be done completely perfectly. And now we have a prosthetic piece that will then snap onto our bone bone foundation guide as well, which is all completely derived from the very beginning. So if our bone foundation guide is done right, everything should follow in line, right? Now, can you mess this up? Absolutely. We are all human, right? If we don't put this in right, now our prosthesis is off at the very end. Now you have to have a knowledge base of now where are you going to take this to make sure your implants are going to be retrofitted to your to your, uh, to your prosthesis or your temporary. But you'll see an example of all this. And this is kind of how it all snaps together. Okay, it's all held in by magnets. But let's look at a case. And this is uh, this is where, like I said, true success came from guided surgery. And so what's nice about facial analysis too, and you look at high-end photos, is that you, know, you can take this to your desktop and you can utilize you know, Keynote or PowerPoint, and then you can really set the stage apart from maybe the next surgeon down to where you're relaying information to the lab that's so different. And this is what I do, okay? And this is all stuff that we can then derive and there are parameters, you know, like I said, digital smile design. There is a number of textbooks out there. there are, there's a number of softwares and, you know, whether it be, like I said, Christian Coachman or Kyle Stanley or, or you know, um, Robert Stanley and a couple of these other guys that are amazing, Amanda C. And, and they, they do digital smile, you know, protocols. But these parameters are not stuff they made up. This is all this is all derived by, you know, research and and comparing years and years and years of facial analysis. And now with AI, a lot of this is done for us. And so we can see where we're going to take things with with maybe her case. And so we have a very small, you know, this is macro aesthetics too. It's not just micro aesthetics. It's just not teeth. And so we look at her upper lip, very, very thin. So maybe if she can maybe do a little bit of fillers here where maybe it covers the transition line. Maybe we don't have to reduce as much bone. We look at the curve of Spee and the curve of Wilson and we look at maybe her lower teeth can be intruded. Let's see her lower, what her lower lip looks like. Let's look at the, the commissure space and, and where it lines up with her, with her nasal spaces and her nasal lines. Where does it line up with her eyes? And so all that can be analyzed, and then we can even take things on a micro level, and we can look at degrees of, of curvatures and angles. And, and this goes back to our orthodontic you know, workups. And orthodontically, are we going to then take teeth out and not be able to have the lip, you know, the fullness that we maybe had at the beginning with natural teeth? And so all this stuff has to be looked at. But there's so many parameters here. We can spend days and days with this. But this is the type of high-end stuff that you need to have a familiarity with. Um, if you want to be, like I said, true successful and set yourself apart, maybe from the next.
And so, you know, looking at overbites and overjets and, and like I said, lip fullness and lip, lip support. Um, but this is why we're taking everything out. She's got failed crown and bridge. She's basically got decay all the way to into the roots. And we're starting from scratch. And in her case, she was in pain with the lower. Uh, I'm still, I'm still. Uh, we were in, she was in pain with the, the uh, lower um, dentition first. So typically I like to start with the maxilla and then match the mandibular if we're doing them on separate visits or try to do them together. And I think we get better success when we do a double arch case together. But in her case, we started with the lower. This is her lower, you know, zirconia prosthetic. Um, and now we're going to match the upper where, you know, finance has played a little bit of a role in terms of where she can go with this. And so this is how we, we start out. You know, this is our surgery. Um, we start out by, you know, doing some type of a straight incision here. We're trying to preserve as much keratinized tissue as possible. This is a full thickness flap. And we want to be a little bit aggressive with this. But th there's a number of, of ways that we do this now to where we actually have guides to show how far back now we need to do our incisions and how far up we need to actually elevate our tissue. And so we've actually fine tuned even circumstances that are here even better. And so um, with that, we're gonna remove a certain number of teeth and we're gonna use a tooth borne guide then also a bone foundation guide where it sits basically on bone and on teeth together. It's very important that we utilize as many kind of frames of reference, typically five where I'll have two on the bone and then two or three on teeth and place this bone foundation guide. Now this is a metal bone foundation guide. We've transitioned to, to doing these out now out of a milled material. Um, and with that, you know, these are, like I said, kind of the high quality of where things fit is that even on the bone and even on the teeth, this fits very, very intimately. So okay. it's, if we know that this bone foundation guide is completely perfect, we know that our case is gonna proceed ahead by placing the implants in the right place, but not only that, but giving them teeth back from our prosthesis in a very, very accurate manner. In our case, you know, I like to root bank. Um, we can talk about that too in more detail on a different on a different day. Uh, but canines, what happens when we take canines out? 90% of the time, the buccal plate comes with it. You know, it's just they're very difficult, especially with patients that have decay and you're, you're utilizing surgery to, you know, um, hand pieces and things like that to get these, these roots out. Why not just cut them off? And so there's a number of, of, of research out there in terms of root banking, but this is our bone foundation guide, but that this is also our bone reduction guide. So this is all completely perfect. You can see how flat it is. We have a nice frame of reference, which is going to be lined up with the uh, maxilla um, and, the, and the cranium. And this is a, you know, kind of a better picture here of what root banking is. So this is just a nice uh, reference in terms of the Salama brothers um, in, in um, Atlanta. They've done a number of research. There's a lot of research out of South America, um, more importantly, even South Africa and New Zealand and, and Australia to where whether you have to have root canal treated teeth or vital teeth, it doesn't matter as long as there's no apical pathology. And so you don't have to root canal these um, canines. Now, in her case, they actually were. Um, but like I said, no pathology evident with these. We leave them in and we just cut it off basically at the bone. But it's actually in the research, it says that we want to try to have these vital if we can. And so the vitality, you don't need to you don't need to treat these. And so they will heal over, they'll coagulate over it, and we'll end up with no problems as long as we get primary closure over the space. But we can talk about that in further detail. This is our implant guide. This all snaps directly on our bone foundation guide. It's all color-coded. So this all color-coded with the sleeve is green, the guided surgery spoon here is going to be green, and then we'll have a, a basically a green implant that's going to go in here too. And those are all our four, six implants. Um, so I type typically like to be in the three, eight to four, two to four, six implants, if you're familiar with bio horizons, but this is all color coded. So it's all very, very predictable and it's very easy to follow, but this is all given on a recipe based on our, our go-to meeting or our zoom meeting with the lab. It's all lined out completely perfectly. So we take that, we put it in our operatory, we put it on the wall and I know exactly what I need to do for each individual implant site. And you'll be able to see this in real time too, as we, I'm gonna show a live surgery um, where it literally takes three minutes to put your implants in. And so I typically carry these by hand. This is a carrier where it screws directly into the implant. We'll take that directly to our, our implant guide. And so it goes directly into the sleeve. And then our recipe will tell me how deep that the implant needs to go, but it also will tell me where the rotation needs to be too. On the carrier, there's a little dimple and you'll be able to have an appreciation of that here. Um, which is here and it'll line up with that blue line. 
And so with that, you know, this little dimple will line up with the blue line and, and that's where we end up with a nice rotation. We also know how deep it's going to be based on our carrier has little notches in it. And, and that's our recipe will tell us it's going to, it's going to be one, two, three, or four. Very, very predictable, very, very easy. And so this is what our implants look like and look how like literally how accurate things are with all this coming within even a half millimeter from our root over here on the number 11 site. And so we can put our implants, like I said, in a very strategic manner to where we get a nice apical spread. We get nice bone, nice, nice, healthy torque around all of our implants. And now we have something that's going to be feasible, not only from a prosthetic standpoint, but for the health of our patients where we're getting in and out, nice accuracy and not a lot of trauma here, which is great. This is our prosthesis goes directly on the bone foundation guide as well. Now this is a PMMA milled temporary. And so with that, it is a superior product than what we used to have with a denture. A denture was acrylic. It's stained over time. You can only, it only lasts, you know, maybe four to six months. Um, with these PMMA temporaries, we can have actually the patient wear these for almost up to a year, if not even longer. And so what's nice about that too, is it breaks up a lot of the financial um, problems that maybe patients have of paying for everything all up front or paying something off within like four to six months. Now we can break up of getting patients out of pain, getting patients in their in their uh, new set of teeth, giving them a life that they probably haven't had in a long time. But we do that at a fraction of the cost, and then they have to pay for their final prosthesis, you know, months down the road, eight, twelve, maybe even eighteen months down the road. Now we do have consent forms and we have liability forms and things like that in which they do sign that they do have to complete these. But it's nice to break up the financial burden for our patients so that they have something to look forward to and get out of you know, the circumstances that maybe they're in. Again, look at the accuracy coming right out of the uh, access holes. Now we're going to pick this up with some type of a temporary material. Um, this is by, you know, chair side material. You can get it from Zest. Um, there's a number of other, you know, cold and um, heat cured or, or light cured materials. Um, we're just going to pick up now the temporary cylinders that are, are, that are going to pick up our temporary here, um, just like this. And so you don't have to be too accurate with this. We're going to pick up our, our temporary cylinders. We're now going to take this off and I can take that back to the lab. And in about 15 minutes, I can kind of clean things up. And this is what the occlusion looks like, you know, right off the bat where we don't have to make any adjustments. So now why one of my team members is off cleaning up the prosthesis and, and shining it and putting a kind of a clear coat on it to make it nice hygienic. We then suture up our case, you know, simple interrupted sutures, nothing too crazy. I try to, like I said, preserve as much keratinized tissue as possible. We're taking more of the palatal tissue away here just with a tissue punch, get nice access to our multi-unit abutments. But like I said, nice and clean. It's going to be hygienic for the patient and long-term success. And so this is what our prosthesis looks like at the time of delivery and literally zero adjustments with this. And so if anything, maybe, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe a high spot on a molar or premolar, uh, things fit extremely well. But look at also the hygiene and the hygienic, you know, intaglio surface of our prosthesis that we provide too. Because it's so like retrofitted digitally, even the, the tissue height and things like that, we can kind of measure and get a nice adaptation of our prosthesis to our tissue. And so we're going to get nice healing from this. Again, this is what the patient looks like as the patient goes home. Um, nice, you know, the overjet was corrected and, and the bite is corrected and everything's in line and very, very, very nicely done. Now, like I alluded to before, this is, that was kind of a, a, a different, um, a lab that we worked with and whatnot. Now we've utilized taking those, you know, that knowledge and then taking it to the, to the magnetic, um, kind of portfolio of what we're going to talk about a little bit now. It's a fairly new partnership with 3D Diagnostics and Vulcan. Um, I've done a number of these cases already, and they've been the most accurate cases that I've done in my career um, by doing digitally full arch, you know, solutions this way. And so um, Vulcan with the milling and, and providing the parts and pieces and the guides and then the, the diagnostics in terms of treatment planning and, and going through those go-to meetings with 3D Diagnostics, it's been an amazing partnership. It, like I said, it's fairly new. Magnetics is our stack up the smiles, um, you know, kind of branding here. But let's talk about a case. And so this is this is Nancy. I'm going to actually show the actual surgery of this advanced periodontal disease. Somebody that's been needing probably full arch for a long time um, finally has the means to do it. And, um, you know, as you can see, we're getting even, you know, diseases exfoliating your teeth by, by themselves. 
um, but whatnot, we're going to, you know, go through and, and start from scratch with, with her. And it's a beautiful, you know, like I said, solution, uh, but we can go through and we can digitally derive, you know, our, our smile analysis. We're not going to get into it with, with Nancy, but nice lip support, you know, lower lips and, and the angles and things like that are very, very nice. If we can kind of mimic where her natural dentition is now and just give her something better, that's going to be an amazing, amazing solution. This is a nice example of basically what the recipe is going to look like. Okay. So for here's our implants. Um, this is the lower arch. We're doing the upper arch with her, but this is just an example of things. And so the number of the teeth that we're going to be replacing, the implant length, here's our diameter, um, our drill length in which we're going to use, the steps in which we want to do it. I typically undermine my osteotomy by two, 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 uh, two depths or two, two widths. So for, let's say, tooth number 20 here, it says that you can go to a 3.7 diameter drill. Typically, I would go to the 2.5, and if I had to, go to the 3.2 drill, just so I get nice torque value on those implants. The depth position, that was the notch in the carrier where it's one, two, three, or four. These are all gonna be SP3, which is the stop point of you know the third line. And then that's pretty much it. And then there's gonna be little remarks in terms of what you talked about during your go-to meeting that's gonna be here in red. And this is something that we then put right on the wall. You know, I mean, we'll put it right on the wall and, and we use it as a reference point. But what's nice about guided surgery is that I get this ahead of time, don't I? And so I can go through my case either the night before or the week before, and I know exactly where I'm headed. And I'm going to go right in the right place because I have a knowledge base where it's proactive. I know exactly where things are going. I can see into the future. So it's a beautiful thing. So this is uh, Nancy. This is her case. And so um, when we start these, we actually start, this is our flap reflection guide. And so this will go directly on the teeth. We're not taking any teeth out. Now the patient's been anesthetized already. And so a patient's under sedation as well, but we can put this now on her natural teeth. And then we can look here, there's little windows to make sure that you're seated all the way, but it'll show me exactly how far back my incisions need to be. So in our case, we're going back almost to the uh, retromolar area here in the tuberosity. And this is just going to be a straight line incision. This is typically done right at the zenus of the gingiva. I want to try to preserve as much keratinized tissue as possible. So this is just a 15C blade going through. We're going to do a full thickness flap here. Okay. And so, but because of that guide and I know how far back I need to go, is that if I do need to go a little bit further back, I'm not, you know, putting in my guide and then getting hung up on anywhere. I know exactly where this is treatment plan from the beginning. Full thickness flap. We're going to take this all the way to bone. And then because of that guide too, I know how far up I need to go to in the vestibule. And so, and then now part of my, on my uh, recipe, there's certain teeth that are gonna be taken out first before I seat the guide. And so a bunch of the molars, you know, these molars have been broken down um, pretty, pretty aggressively. Um, also the tooth number seven that was basically falling out of the patient's mouth and so that was taken out. Now, some of these teeth are being left behind because this is how I'm gonna seat my guide. So now there's, um, areas here in the very, very back where that, that guide is going to sit on bone. And then we're going to snap in now just with the magnets here of where this is going to go through and you're going to see how things are going to be seated directly on teeth. But now we have reference points. And in this case, we have like seven or eight, which is pretty amazing. That's, a, that's completely accurate. And so this will fit on, you know, five or six remaining, remaining teeth that will be taken out. Once we seed everything, nothing's rocking around. The tissue is not impinging anywhere. We can now then fixate our bone reduction guide or our bone foundation guide directly to the maxilla. So these little pins will go through. You know, this is kind of like hyper mode here. We don't want to sit here all night and watch this um, over an hour. We're going to do this in about five minutes. But with that, now we can then take off. Everything's done by a magnet. There's not little pins or anything that we're going to lose. Now we have a bone reduction guide, which is our bone foundation guide here that is seated completely perfectly. And so now we'll take out the remaining dentition. You can see these are very easy to take out, almost zero bone is holding them in place. Um, in our case, because of the uh, pathology that was associated with the canines, we're actually gonna take out the canines as well. And so typically, like I said, mentioned before, I'd like to try to keep those in the best we can. We clean up any granulation tissue or any diseased tissue, and now we can reduce our bone. And because this is all completely accurate, we use, you know, there's a bunch of, uh, instruments by Meisinger, you can get them from Salvin or, or Ace Dental Supply uh, for alveoplasty burrs. And we can then plasty all the way to our bone reduction guide. Now we take our, our implant guide, those go directly on with the magnets and directly on our bone foundation guide. Like I said, it's like, it's like Legos. 
With our guided surgery kit by BioHorizons, these little keys represent the osteotomy width. And now we take everything directly to depth, which is fantastic because I don't have to worry about stopping at a certain point on my drills. And you can see how fast this can be, right? Copious irrigation, we wanna irrigate this the best we can. And then we take these, after we get our osteotomies to the point where we feel like we're gonna get nice torque value with our, then place our driver directly on the implant. And you can see here now the little, the little notches in the, uh, in the carrier will tell me how deep I need to go. And so I can then reference my, my recipe, you know, it's SP2, SP3, whatever the case may be. Now, once we take our, our implant guide, look how perfectly level and aligned my implants are with the bone reduction. I know that my bone foundation guide was in the most perfect place because everything is all intimate. It's all nice. And um, yeah, we're getting good torque value. These are our multi-unit abutments. Now we have a multi-unit abutment guide as well, but also directly on the bone foundation guide, there's little lines that'll show me if we're using angled multi-unit abutments, that those are placed in the, in the rotation where it's gonna then line up where it'll come directly out of the integral surface of our prosthesis. This is our prosthesis that has magnets on it as well. And you can see here, if you can see just even with my mirror, with the, the temporary cylinders here, um, we can put these on. Now these little carriers um, within the, the temporary cylinders, they're little carriers you can use for multi-unit abutments. But in our case, we use them as like kind of block out instruments as well. And so the prosthesis fits directly over the top of this. Um, nothing's hitting, nothing's binding. It goes directly in, you know, the path of draw is completely perfect. And now we can pick it up with our temporary material. Okay. So this is all just, uh, it's again, a cold cure, light cured material. Um, we're going to pick up our temporary cylinders in our prosthesis. And this is all directly on the bone foundation guide with the magnets. Okay. We can then take these off. And then once this comes off, you're going to be able to see how everything's going to come out. And now we can clean that up in our lab. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. But look at the nice occlusion here. This is generally just on the, on the uh, magnets here. Almost zero adjustments that's going to have to be made here. And so we'll actually check her, her bite too before she goes off to the lab. Hopefully we're not held up on anything uh, too aggressive. And now we'll clean things up. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll drill off the, uh, the uh, magnets here. We'll clean things up and make this all nice and, uh, nice and hygienic for the patient. Any little ledges or anything, you can then go back through with a straight handpiece. Uh, make sure things are nice and sharp, um, where it's going to then, you know, perforate into soft tissue. Simple interrupted sutures. You know, this is all glycolon suture, monofilament, um, typically 5-0 suture that we'll then uh, put in our, our patient here. Nice keratinized tissue and um, nice, uh, nice surgery here. And so this is after everything's been cleaned up. You can see everything's all nice and smooth. It's going to be nice and flat. It's going to fit intimately within the soft tissue. Nice keratinized tissue. Again, a tissue punch, just taking a little bit of that away so we can get a nice draw coming out of the tissue with our prosthesis. Oh. And then um, with that, you know, we just hand torque these. And so typically, if you look at the, the research with any type of hand torque, you can get about 12 to 15 newtons to hold those in place. Mm -hmm. Now, those, those screws are very, very... Um, they, they can be stripped very easily, but this is after we get everything else kind of torqued in here. And like I said, almost zero adjustments with, with this type of surgery. And this is about an hour procedure, you know, from the time we start the IV to the time when the patient goes home. Okay. So, um, with that, I'm going to answer some questions at the very end. Um, but I appreciate you guys throwing those down, but with this, you know, with, with utilizing this type of technology or this, this type of workflow, Full arch success has been, you know, it's it's been astronomical in terms of the progression and what we see on on a monthly basis. And so I have a lot to, you know, I owe a lot to the the implants that I do use. And I think BioHorizons implants with their prosthetic pieces, and now with the workflow with 3D diagnostics with Vulcan, now it's really tied that even in a, in a more intimate uh, manner. And so. Um, with the biologics that I use too, with bone grafting and, and alloderm and soft tissue, you know, circumstances, a lot of this is how I can tie just and bring it in just with one solution, which is one company. And so Teeth Express is, you know, it's a marketing value um, is where I get a lot of, of um, referrals, you know, directly from, from off the internet um, and a lot of leads through Teeth Express and their website and where people can research full arch. We're a provider, a Teeth Express provider here in Las Vegas. So we get a lot of leads, you know, coming from that as well. So more marketing, um, fully, go fully guided, full arch solutions. Now, like I said, with that true partnership, 
the accuracy that I'm seeing, you know, in the last 10 years is at the most highest level right now. And so super successful and super fun. And with that, when you see growth and then you, then you, you have growth with your referral base or, you know, your, your, uh, your specialist that you're working with or growth within your team, everybody's excited about it. And so it's just one of those things that's been super fun to, you know, kind of do over, over the years. And so I do play a lot of hockey, um, you know, typically, you know, watching hockey games or even playing during the way I, I probably play too much hockey, but nonetheless, um, with that, you know, the Golden Knights are the Las Vegas champions, uh, Stanley Cup champions last year. But I love hockey because when you look at hockey, there's there's not a, a team that has a one man team. Everybody has to gel together and they have to gel together at the right time and they have to have the, you know, the coachability and, and the athleticism and things. that. But they have to gel together as a unit. And so when I, I parallel that to, to my practice or even my life is that there are so many people that are a part of my team whether it be like my team members that I work with every single day, you know, there's 11 of us here and my hygienists and my assistants and my front office um, personnel, um, the labs I work with, the referral base that I work with, the patient, the patient's part of the team. Um, you know, it's just, there's so much that goes into it. My family's a part of my team. My friends and colleagues are a part of my team. You know, the, the programs that I work with and the, and the implant companies that I work with are part of my team. But when you put it all together, everybody gels together and you end up winning together right you you step away from kind of the minor smaller things and you look at the big picture of where things are headed within hopefully your your practice or even your life and just the, the vibes are great you know the the environment's great the culture in my practice is great because we've all tied in and we've all bought in the same way that the golden knights did last year and they end up winning championships and so think about that and what are the small things that you're going to do in your practice to where maybe you take, you know, you know, that 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 assistant that is maybe the thorn in everybody's side and you get rid of her or him and bring in somebody else that's fresh. And maybe that's something that changes. Or maybe you don't have a morning huddle anymore. Like I don't do a morning huddle. And there's a reason for that is that we would go through and it was monotonous and it took time away from everything. But when everybody has systems in place, and I know that Bell is responsible for this. I know that Carolyn's responsible for this. I know Sophia and Sonia are responsible for this. We don't have to come together in a little unit at the beginning of the day when everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing and everybody has responsibilities and everybody is, as long as they follow those responsibilities and accomplish it, then why do we have to talk about Jim that's coming in that's maybe, you know, getting an impression done or whatnot? Well, we should know that already, right? Everybody has responsibility. And so we don't do a morning huddle. You know, we have our back office. We'll get a little bit together. Our front office gets a little bit together. Everybody's got their own responsibilities, but I don't even have to be involved with that, which is great. And everybody has got, got a little monotony in things and, and everybody's part of the team, but we don't have to do that. Um, but that's just my practice. You know, it's everybody's different. Um, but with that, um, there's a team that came together with this, this book that is basically, I think is going to be the standard um, of implant dentistry. So modern implant dentistry, Bart Silverman is an oral surgeon. Um, Richard Miron, a fantastic clinician and, and scholar, um, they came through and they put together a team, which I was completely humbled to be a part of, um, to where there's a chapter in here on fully guided surgery and prosthetics that I did write. Uh, but here's a QR code. This goes directly to Quintessence. Um, it is an amazing book. Um, I've had an opportunity to read a bunch of this from colleagues that I've had from all over the country and all over the world, in, in, in essence. And um, anyway, check this out. It's, it's an amazing book. I don't get any profits from this. I don't make any money on this. I did this, you know, we, we wrote this for free. Um, I think I got 10 copies here that anyway, if anybody's really special, they can maybe get one for free, but um, nonetheless, you know, this is a great book. QR codes there. Um, this really stood out to me. And I, as we kind of end tonight, I want to end on this because Kobe Bryant was a big inspiration to me where I hated him at one point. I disliked the kind of what I thought I knew about him. And then the more, you know, over the last 20 years, unfortunately, even through tragedy, you know, of his death, you know, getting to even know even more about him. But this is when I first saw this. And I think I saw this on Instagram or, or some type of social media where 10 things that require zero talent. And every single one of these, I thought about Kobe Bryant. And so um, with that, you know, being on time, you know, how easy is that to do? For some people, it's a complete nightmare. I have one gal in my, in my office that literally is five minutes late every single day. I'm like, what does it take for us to be on time? It doesn't take a whole lot, right? 
zero talent with that. It's just a little bit of time management, making an effort, you know, showing some type of an effort on a daily basis. And it can be the littlest things, but make an effort and just don't be that person just sitting in the background or maybe the person that, as a doctor sitting in your office, you know, watching TV when you can be out intermingling and maybe, you know, socializing with your team or, or your patients. Okay. Um, being high energy. And I think that's uh, super important, you know, not to, not to look lazy, you know, try to be involved. Um, having a positive attitude, you know, sometimes that's, that's harder said than done. Today, like, I felt like today was great. Tomorrow, I may have a, the shittiest day of all time, and maybe my attitude's not going to be great. So I have to think about that even ahead of time, going, no matter what, let's try to have a positive attitude because it does go a long way with everybody. Being passionate. Are you really passionate about what you do? You know, is work work, or is it something that you really have passion for where it's almost a hobby? And that's, I think, where we're at in my practice, where we come in and it's not work for anybody. I think that, you know, we do work hard. We go home tired. Um, but I think we have a lot of passion in it. A lot of it follows the leader. And so whether it be myself or my, my office manager or whoever the case may be, it could be somebody different on a given day. Using good body language. I thought that was interesting. Being coachable, even as the, the owner or the, the physician or the doctor, the CEO of your practice, are you coachable? And there's not a day goes by where I learn something from somebody else in my practice. Hey, doc, have you, did you think about this? Or, you know, what do you, what do you want to do in this? What, what's the diagnosis for this? You think it could be this, you know, or whatever. I, you got to be coachable and somebody that, you know, that they can sit you down or you can sit them down and you can have a conversation and be a little bit critical and still be coachable. And I think that's very, very important doing a little extra, you know, just going a little bit of, of a different uh, uh, way of doing things and maybe going a little bit beyond uh, maybe for somebody or, or some person in your practice um, or even in your life, being prepared, I think is huge. And so this is proactive, right? This is a proactive nature to where now we can utilize guided surgery. We can utilize guided products or our digital technology to our advantage and you will be completely prepared, but you also have to set systems in place now for your team to be prepared as well. Okay. And then having a strong, strong work ethic. And I think that goes huge. And so sometimes that's not, not easy to do. Um, we do have a course on this. You know, this is something we give a little preview for the last hour. Um, I know we've gone over a little bit. I appreciate you hanging on with me. Um, this is a QR code for that as well. There's a discount code, um, Curry 500. I thought that was funny. Um, I don't know how they came up with that, but that's a good one. Sounds like a uh, NASCAR race. Um, but you can then, you know, click on the QR code, use that uh, discount code if you want to come out. Um, this is uh, limited to 25 to 30 participants. It does fill up extremely fast. And so with this, we do two days hands on. You'll, you'll be able to understand the parts and the pieces. But I also do a live surgery with this, too, in front of the whole group. Um, we have a basically a TV studio within one of my my operatories, which you'll be able to see this live where I will explain kind of the, the nuances of what the surgery on a patient that is maybe unpredictable and what, what may be said and what, what can happen. Um, have we had arterial bleeds and things like that? Absolutely. But that's surgery. And so we take care of those and, and handle that in front of the group, which is super fun. Um, and I answer questions in the middle of the procedure as well. So we have a mic that can go around. I can hear that. And then anything that comes up where you're seeing things live that you want answered on, I can totally do that. It's fantastic. It comes with a manual, the whole thing. Um, it's a great course. I think it's fun. We have a great time. It's in Las Vegas. It's in March. Good time to be here. Um, this is my information. Um, I, like I said, I, I will get back to you, become an Instagram friend. You know, it's one of those things I've met some amazing people through that social media platform. I've learned a ton. I've got to know people a lot. Uh, but this is my email. If you want to email me questions or, or concerns or, or anything that you have maybe within your practice or maybe you want to be better at and maybe I can help out in just a little bit of a way, I'm a completely at your disposal. And so I'm, I'm available for that. I love it. Um, let's go through some of these questions here real quick as we end. Um, let's see. Do you have any suggestions on how to find a high volume of patients that need all on X? I wish I could answer that. That's, that's such an, uh, that's a, yeah, it's such a gray area in terms of going direct to the media um, or grow, going direct to, you know, direct, direct to, to the market um, with all on X. As a specialist, I do have a probably a 70 percent, maybe 65 percent influx of uh, patients from a referral base. 
but we do get a lot of patients that I call unattached or off the street. And so with that, I think it's more word of mouth. Um, so when you provide something different or when patients come in and have an experience that's way different than maybe what they had, you know, somewhere down the street, make sure that you take advantage of that because image is everything, whether it be the person that's, you know, greeting them at the front and how they do it, how they answer the phones, um, how you treat them as a doctor patient relationship, how their procedures go. I mean, how the outcome goes, you know, where you set expectations, how they feel when they come into the practice and what they see. And so, you know, my practice, I feels like it's different because I, if I'm here all the time, I want to make it feel, I want to be me. I mean, look at the wallpaper I have. I mean, it's kind of wild. Um, but we have a lot of, you know, music stuff. I'm a big music guy and, and motorcycle stuff. And just, it's just something that where they know that it's going to be, it's, it's me. It's not just cookie cutter, you know, Patterson dental smile face, you know, of a family make yourself a little bit different, bring a lot of personality into your practice. And then the word of mouth gets out and then you become, you know, the guy or, or the girl. Okay. Um, how to increase case acceptance. I think that's a, that's a very interesting question too. Um, it takes a lot of work. You know, I, I think with, with case acceptance, it does take a lot of work because everybody has to be on the same page. So when I go in and I and I have a well, what, let's go even go back further. Is that I can have a patient that calls the office and is asking questions about maybe all on X or or maybe they've had a treatment plan done by somebody else um, or with anything that I do, and they're asking questions to my front office staff and team. If they don't answer a certain way, and then they come in and do a consultation with me, and I and I say it and I do it completely differently, now the confusion's there, right? Oh, Lindsay at the front office or the front desk answered questions this way. And I thought I was doing this, but then Dr. Levitt's telling me this. And then when Dr. Levitt leaves the room, the assistant now is saying something even different. Now we're all like convoluted and it's, it's chaos. But when everybody's on the same page and that all comes with training, that comes with training, but it also comes with a lot of confidence that you have in those people to be able to go out and be themselves. And so I don't dictate, you know, I don't have like a sheet that says, when a patient calls about this, follow this dialogue. I think that's crazy. I think that's when you put the cookie, but it's all cookie cutter and people see through it. You know, I think that people see through genuine nature. And so when you're genuine in what you do and everybody buys in and you're part of a team, I think then that's when case acceptance goes way up. And I, and ours is extremely high. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something I'm very, very proud of. Um, but that's a great question. How much do you charge for the work um, and release the financial burden for him? Um, so we're 30,000 in arch um, to get them into a provisional, basically everything that I take care of um, on the day of surgery, um, consultation, sedation, the whole thing, it's 20,000. So the 10,000 is put on the back end for the final prosthesis, but 20,000 is due up front. Typically, if they're, if they're going to come back to the data collection visit, we collect 5,000. Um, the reason being is that we want to make sure that we cover our bases when we send stuff up to a lab. And so that whole solution with Vulcan, with the 3D diagnostics, to get your provisional, to get all your guides, it's $2,500. So um, it's a lot cheaper than what we used to pay. Um, I used to pay up close even to, to about 4000 with other labs. With that, it's a very, like I said, it's a financially um, advantageous for me to spend $2,500 on the guides and the provisional. I don't have a lab guy there anymore that I have to pay and the, the surgeries are done quicker, which I means I can do more arches in a day um, or a week or whatever you want to do. So uh, that's kind of how we break it all down that way. Um, how I get a book. Well, go to the, go to the QR code. Um, I should have had like a, I don't know, raffle or something. That would have been great. But Maria, uh, email me and I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Um, minor question. If an implant is too close to the nasopalatine foramen, will there be a complication and how far should it be from the canal? Absolutely not. In fact, you can actually put an implant directly into the foramen. Now you have to curette that foramen completely out. Okay. There's a lot of, in fact, in that book, in the, in the modern implant dentistry book, it talks about anatomy and, and nasopalatine access of putting implants even in that, in that site. And so you can do that. Um, now, will they have maybe some minor numbness on the, you know, the palatal of, of the central incisor area? Possible. Um, but like I said, the innervation, nerve innervation in those in those sites, it's across the board in terms of where that is. But you can actually place implants there. And so 
Um, I don't like to do that. And I don't like to have anything perforating into a vacant space. Um, so I will try to have a 360 degree volume of bone around my implants. Um, but like I said, if you get, if the basal palatine canal is small enough, you can actually address that and have that 360 degree of, uh, bone around it. So that's a great question. Not a minor question, a great question. I appreciate everybody, you know, hanging out on a Monday night. Um, yeah, like I said, it's been a long day for me, but I'm excited. You know, it's one of those things that I love engaging with you all. If you can even get on, get on Instagram, hit me up, um, you know, with, with questions there too. But more so, let's let's get to know each other. I think the community's great. And, um, you know, like I said, we're all on the same team together. Let's make this profession better. Um, let's make, you know, our, our patients happy and uh, more so live beautiful lives. And, um, yeah, be fantastic. <laughs>